Hello there. Welcome to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon. This is my first time to go live. I've done five other shows, and they have all been taped because I was traveling and doing conferences, and I just got back from halfway around the world. So I did the taped ones so that they would have them to play while we're getting started on these things. But tonight's the first live one, so I'm not sure what's going to happen here. And Don, who runs all of this, has told me that there could be call-ins if you want to. Some of the other ones, the people, you probably listen to the other shows that I've taped, and maybe you have some questions or something you want to ask me about my work. Because I know many of you out there have read my books and are familiar with my work. Because I lecture all over the world, and a lot of people are familiar with my books. All right. But also, I want to give out some numbers here if anyone does want to call in and talk to me and ask questions. The number for the United States is an 800, it's an eight, uh, it's a free number, is 1-888-268-4313. That's 888-268-4313. If you want to call in and ask questions any time during the next hour. And for those of you who are listening overseas in other countries and international, we have an also have a number that you can call in. That number is 281-419-7697. 281-419-7697. That's for international listeners. All right. I said whenever I got back, I was going to tell you a little bit about my trip because it's the first time I have ever gone to the Middle East. This means now that I've been on every continent in the world. Africa was the last continent that I hadn't been on. And I never thought I was going to go to the Middle East first because I've been asked to go to Johannesburg and different parts further down in Africa. But this was a very interesting trip. Um, I wasn't even supposed to go there, really. I think I mentioned on the other shows, the reason I went was because I was supposed to be doing an international conference in Istanbul. And uh, they had asked me to come to Dubai I had no idea where in the world Dubai was. I didn't even know what it what it was. I'd never heard of that country before. So I went on the Internet and found out, here's Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq. Dubai is right in the middle of all of that, right on the Persian Gulf. It's, it's called the United Arab Emirates, and it is separate from the other parts of the Middle East and the other Arab countries over there. And I was real worried about going, and I talked to the woman who wanted me to come over, and she said there are many expatriates there. Uh, expatriates are people that, well, they're mostly what we, they call Westerners, the people from Europe, and a lot of English And um, I think it used to be an English colony a long, long time ago, so they call them expatriates are there. And she said they are starving for information. So they said, please, can you come and do some lectures and talk about your work? Because they don't have very much metaphysical information over there. Uh, Even when we arranged to have my books brought in, there was only certain types of books that were allowed into the country, and they had to go through a censor board to be allowed in and be sold there. And so I was a little worried about it. I didn't know what was going to happen. But they assured me that the United Arab Emirates, in the countries of Dubai, is neutral. They're neutral everything that's going on around them over there. And they said in some of the countries in the Middle East don't like that because they won't take sides. But they say, don't worry about it. They said, you'll be perfectly safe and it'll be an exciting adventure. So I thought, well, as long as I'm going to Istanbul for the international conference, I'll tack it on because it's not very far away. So we went ahead and made arrangements. And I even made arrangements to teach one of my classes while I was over there. 
So everything was going along smoothly until about a month or so ago when Istanbul, they emailed me and said they were canceling their conference. And that's that far into the game. And I said, wait a minute, what's going on here? And um, part of it was because the keynote speaker had gotten ill. Uh, I wasn't going to mention his name, but a lot of you probably know him. Zachariah Sitchin was one of the, the main speakers they were going to have. And they said because of his health, he couldn't come. And then some of the other speakers couldn't work it into their schedules. So they decided to cancel the whole conference, and they're going to try to reschedule next year. And he wanted me to come next year, but I said, I don't know if I can work it into my schedule next year. We'll just have to see. But I said, there I am, not going to Istanbul, but I already had the plans to go to Dubai. So I didn't have any choice but to go ahead and make that trip separately. So I think it was meant to be because there were very interesting things that happened over there that wouldn't have happened if I had they had said, just come here. It's a long trip. And I'm getting to where I don't like to do those long trips, like the ones to Australia when you're on the plane for 12, 14 hours after you leave uh, California. I'm getting to where I don't like to do those real long trips anymore. And I think that would have discouraged me if I thought I'm just going over there. But it was meant to be, and I always say they, and if you always, if you listen to my other shows, you know who I mean by they, the ones who run this and the ones who get me to where I'm supposed to go, the ones that take care of me, the ones on the other side, I guess you would say. They're always arranging things, and I kind of go along for the ride. I never know what, what they have planned for me next. But I think it was very important that I went to that part of the world. But if I was just going to go there, I wouldn't have done it to begin with. But um, I had to fly to London, which I, I was just there in May. You know, I spent the whole month of May in Europe. I was in Moscow and Ukraine and Holland and Norway. I go to many, many countries. So I fly seven hours from Chicago to London, and I stay overnight. I like to break these long trips up. Then it was seven more hours into Dubai, so it's a long trip, and not knowing what to expect. But if you've ever been on these flights that go overseas and they go for long distances, they have the little um, maps that are shown. You can follow your progress by turning them on. And little airplane, it shows right where you are at any given time, over what continent, what cities, and how much longer it is till you get to your destination. And so, I was watching that. I saw, even though it was late at night, we were coming in. I saw we were flying right over Iraq. We were flying right over Baghdad in Iraq, and it was a strange feeling that here we are right over where the war is going on. And if you look out the windows, it's night. All we could see was the lights of cities. But you could see some fires, but we thought they were probably the tops of the oil wells. But it was just a strange feeling that here we are flying right over the war zone. Believe me, that's as close as I ever want to get to the war. Then after flying out of Iraq, we had to fly over the Persian Gulf, and the uh, Dubai is right on the other side of the Persian Gulf. So we got in there about 1 o'clock in the morning. But uh, in one of my books, I did mention that they told me one time, and you know, I said, I don't get my information with channeling. It comes through the people that I work with, all the people that I'm hypnotized and I do therapy with, They find a way to get messages through to me when I'm working with these people. And often it will be toward the end of the session after I finish the therapy and working with the person and taking them through the past life that's most appropriate. Often at the end of the session, they will come through these people and give me messages. And it's happened so much now that to me it's just like talking to an old friend on the telephone. And I always pay attention to what they tell me because they do take care of me and they've changed my diet. They've 
They've told me that if I'm not supposed to go with somewhere, I won't even be allowed to step out the front door. So at that kind of protection, I'm not going to argue with it. But one time they told me, before I even ever traveled out of the States, that they said, what a, you will go to London. They said, and when this happens, you'll be traveling all over the world. And they said, every country you go to, it's very important that your energy be there. And they said, uh, doesn't mean any energy will be taken from you, but it's important for your energy to be in these places to interact with whatever is going on there. Everywhere you go, anybody, everywhere you go, they say you leave a piece of your energy there. It doesn't take anything away from you, but it adds to whatever is happening there. The energy is needed in that place. And any time you think about that place again, you instantly return there. Not physically, but you do return there because your energy draws you back there. So they told me any time I'm supposed to go somewhere, it's because my energy is needed in that place. And I think any of the rest of you who are what you call light workers or energy workers will understand what I'm talking about. So I thought maybe one of the reasons I was supposed to go over there was that so my energy could be present in that part of the world. Who knows? I hope it'll be for good anyway. It would be used in a positive way. But as close as I want to get to the war, just by flying over it, it was just a strange feeling to be in that proximity. And Dubai is a most amazing place. I didn't know anything about it before, just looking it up on the Internet. And now I have found it's the richest country in the world. It's totally amazing. Here's a, a place. It's a huge city. They call the whole country Dubai, but the city is Dubai also. Here's a whole country, a whole city that in the 1970s was just a desert community. There was nothing there but just nomads and people living. They said they never had any manufacturing. It was all trading that came in on ships. And in those days, there was a lot of pearl diving that was done off the coast in the Persian Gulf. But it was just people living there in that area. Big, small houses and with the desert community. Now it's one of the fastest growing areas in the world. I've never seen anything like it. Blocks and blocks and blocks of skyscrapers are being built. They're all stages of development. And it all began toward the end of the 1970s. There's more construction going on there in one place than anywhere else in the world. It is it is just tremendous. I've never seen anything 